So the real reason we got the Gen 3 Starlink uh, is because of this. So this is our Pelican 1610 case. It's worked really well to hold all of our equipment. It's very rugged and durable and, you know, can take a bit of bumping around as we're off-roading, but it takes up a lot of space, right? And it's big and it's heavy and it's hard to get out of here. And so um, we just were really motivated by the option of the Gen 3 to just have a really thin dish uh, that was a lot easier to store than this big old thing. When we first got our Starlink Gen 2, we got a Pelican 1610 case with uh, pick apart foam, and we made a nice home for the Gen 2 Starlink. We have the receiver in here, the router, and the cables, and a little uh, tripod with a 3D printed um, adapter that we made. Uh, since we have a lot of photo video tripods. And it all worked well, um, but it was sort of a pain in that we'd have to take everything out each time we wanted to use it. And so over time, we mounted the router permanently in the rig and had a little bit less cable, but we still had to carry all of this, and especially this dish is awkward with this pole coming out of it. And so got that, and uh, yeah, our big motivation for getting the Gen 3 was really the dish is much smaller, it's much easier to store as you'll see, and uh, yeah, we just thought it'd be a way to get rid of having to carry all of this with us. What we're going to be doing, I'll show you here, so under our dinette we have our inverter and router for our existing Starlink V2, and then uh, some of this wiring goes around to some other places which I'll show you, um, but we're going to take this out and replace it with the V3 router, the V3 power supply, and run um, a new Ethernet cable as well since the ends are a little bit different. So we're going to get on that. All right, so we've disconnected our Ethernet on the V2, and then we also had some wires coming off of our relay to power the inverter. And so I think very happy about this uh, almost accidental decision we made last time to just mount all this equipment on this board. Uh, because one of the nice things we can do now is just go ahead and take everything out of here um, in one nice big piece. And so we'll take this over to the workshop and remount everything and then we can just pop it back in there and screw it back in place. Alright, so I got my new components just sort of dry fitted here on the board. So this is my existing uh, inverter. Um, generally I can run the Starlink and charge a laptop on it, which is really all I'm looking for. Um, and then this is the power supply. So I have an open end here uh, like this. So I just have a closed end here that I need to print another open end for, uh, cause I need a power cable to come out of that. And then this is the router. Um, it looks like I printed these maybe a little backwards. So um, I'm gonna need to drop this plane down to the bottom and then we should be good to go. But it's a nice, uh, nice fit if you look at the profile, you know, if it's the, the shape of the router nicely, so. This is a 3D model made in Tinkercad for the Starlink Gen 3 router. I made this model with some of the shapes over here. I often use Tinkercad for simpler basic shapes. And so in this case, we have a left side and a right side. It fits the router profile, uh, including the slope sort of triangular angle of it. So it's pretty easy to 3D print in a couple hours on a 3D printer. You can see one of them behind me. And we mount this onto a wood panel with screws, but you could also put BHB tape, 3M, dual lock Velcro, or something like that on the back. And uh, just a real quick and easy way to mount the uh, Starlink equipment. All right, so we put our wood panel back in here, and this is an area under our dinette where there's a lot of electrical. And so you can see here we have the router, the power supply, and the inverter, and then sort of routed the cables around here through some harnesses and goes all the way uh, over to the ethernet port on the side of the camper. And here we have our Starlink V3 with the prototype of our Starlink adapter here for V3. It just clips in where the kickstand goes and attaches to your favorite photo tripod. It's really easy to store that and get it set up pretty quickly. And then we just have our cable going back here to our uh, jack that's at the side of the rig. 
So there you go. Starlink V3 set up, working, ready to go. And then lastly, we have the inverter wired to our S-Pod here, which is a relay. And so we can go ahead and just tap Starlink and then that's it. It's on and we're good to go. So this is the big reason we got the Gen 3 Starlink. Um, we have it stored in this nice little slot in this new cabinet, which we'll talk about another time, but uh, it's nice and skinny. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And we have our tripod, our cable, and our receiver dish all here out of the way with lots of extra storage. You can see here, um, we have our Starlink Gen 3 tripod adapter, uh, which we, we make and sell on Etsy. There'll be a link below. Um, and then we just have some of this packing foam and uh, this tripod up here, and it's just, it's real easy to get in and out. Uh, we've traveled hundreds of miles off-road in the dirt and uh, it stayed, stayed put and um, been easy to use when we want it and out of the way when we didn't. And uh, now we don't have that huge Pelican case, so more storage for other fun things.